Now, in the exciting world of high-end scroll saws, there were really only two players for the last, I don't know, two decades or so, Excalibur and Hegner, and both made really good scroll saws. Now, whichever way you went, Excalibur or Hegner, you couldn't lose. Short while ago, Jet released their 22-inch scroll saw, which looks an awful lot like the Excalibur. Jet made a couple of improvements on it. I think the bed's a little bit thicker, and the quick change blade, definitely better than the old system. But you know what's even better than a quick change tool release? A thousand dollars cheaper. That's right. Jet is selling this for around a grand, while the Heckner is still around two grand last time I checked. That's half price. So this one comes with a foot pedal. And it's one of these uh, foot pedal switches where you plug the uh, scroll saw into the switch and then the switch into the power. Now this is not a variable speed control. It's a little disappointing. It's on or off. That's it. This controls variable speed. It does not work like a sewing machine. The foot pedal is just on or off. Now the cord is thick enough on the foot pedal to make it not want to stay in place. Now they thought about that and put a little hole in it so that you can screw it right to the floor, but let's be honest, that's not something that I'm really planning on doing, so I'm just going to have to deal with the foot pedal if I even choose to use it. Oh. So you know when they ship these things, they put this anti-rust coating on the metal, it's this really sticky, gooey, gummy substance. And I just got it all over me. It comes off with a little WD-40 or some mineral spirits and probably should have done that before I was leaning on it. I'm using mineral spirits here and you can see it just washes right away. Now when you remove that protective coating, you're going to want to put a new protective coating on it to keep it from rusting. I'm just using some paste wax. All right, well, that was a pain in the ass. So, on to the features. It's got one of those standard uh, air nozzles where the, uh, as the uh, part moves up and down, it pushes down a baffle. I always found those to be adequate, but less than ideal, and on the jet, that's no exception. The adjustments are fine, the switch is up front, which I like it, even though it has a foot pedal. If you don't have a foot pedal, you don't have to lean over the whole uh, uh, saw to uh, get to the back. The uh, Variable speed control knob seems good, and I think there's a good uh, mix between the uh, lowest setting and the highest setting. There's a pretty thick, solid piece of steel that runs both along the top and the bottom. However, the stand itself is fairly thin. All of this mass is positioned at the center of what's a pretty thin, hollow steel drum. That's not great for vibration, and I suspect that's why this vibrates a little bit more than I would have expected. Look at this bolt right over here. That's what's holding up the bed. That is direct metal on metal. I have to wonder whether or not a small nylon or rubber washer would have helped with vibration in the bed. I think at one point I'm going to give that a try and see if it helps. I said before there really aren't any quick stops for adjusting the angle of the bed, but there are these registration marks, and they're a little bit awkward to use. You have to sort of remove the tension on the knob, turn it, find approximately where the registration mark is, depress the spring, Turn it forwards and backwards until it sort of binds the hole, and then you can lock it down. I feel like there might have been a better way to do that. There's an air nozzle for your vacuum on the side, and plenty of holes in the bed to keep the uh, dust low. I think that's pretty handy, but the biggest feature that uh, Jet touts is this uh, mechanism that holds the blade. The normal scroll saws, you would uh, tighten this to control the tension. There's no exception to that here. The difference is, in one motion, when you put the uh, blade into the center, as you turn it back, it's gripping the blade and lifting and tensioning that up. That's pretty neat and handy. But here's the bad news. The mechanism at the bottom goes into these spacers over here, which you sort of pre-set up and you keep on the side. But what happens is, when you put this in, there's a little bit 
of resistance here, and you have to angle it just right and center the blade between the uh, gap. Otherwise, you can risk twisting or damaging the blade. Guess how I know? Now, what happens is it's just awkward and uncomfortable enough and has just enough resistance that you're probably not going to do that blind. Meaning, you're not going to be sitting here or standing here using it and reach underneath and just sort of feel it into position. You're going to want to bend down and you're going to want to look at what you're doing. I feel like that just takes away a little bit of what could have been a really easy blade change. Now, the other thing I don't like about what's under here is all the moving parts are completely exposed. They've made no attempt to hide or cover any of that. And that's right, the moving parts where the blade is there is right underneath where that dial is. There's no adjusting that bed while that blade is moving. Not that you should do that anyway, but if you do a lot of scroll work, you may get in the habit of reaching underneath there to grab that knob, and that's a no-no on this saw. So even if I'm standing up here and using it, it is conceivable to me that I might reach a hand underneath right where the uh, mechanism is moving. If you have a stool and your knee is up, theoretically your knee can hit that as well. Just stand clear of that. At least that's what Jet will tell you to do. Keep your hands and legs and loose clothing away from the moving mechanism at the bottom. That's fine. And I suppose if you do keep all of that material and your hands away from it, you're not going to run into a problem. But at the same point, I've also been told not to fall off a ladder, and I've done that more than once. So remember when I was telling you about the foot pedal, how it's just on or off? Well, one of the cool things that Jet did is they added a soft start feature. So when I do turn it on, oh, <laughs> forgot to turn it on. Okay, with the tool turned on, if you depress the switch, notice how it has a soft start to it? So there are a couple of adjustments they tell you to do out of the box. It all have to do with the uh, stroke of the blade. A uh, machinist square really helped me. So the first thing I had to do was parallel this bed. And I just put uh, something up here, put a mark here, moved it over here, and this knob over here will control to make sure that the arm is actually parallel. The other thing, of course, that you can control is blade tension. I showed you that when I uh, tightened this uh, handle here and it adjusted the tension on the blade. Now the, other, now the other adjustment they tell you to make is with the motor. If you loosen the bolts on the motor, you can actually turn it just a little bit forwards and backwards. And what that does is it changes the blade stroke. So it'll tilt the blade forward or back. So as the stroke goes down, it'll kind of cut down and then back up again, or it'll be mostly straight up and down. I understand there's some advantages and disadvantages of both. I prefer one going straight up and down as best as possible. I dialed it in. It's almost all straight up and down, not quite, but I think it's still pretty good. Let's give this a test. As far as how parallel it is, it's always a good sign when the piece will slide through in either direction. This is a 2x42 and it made fairly quick work of it. I did have it all the way on uh, high speed, but I thought the vibration was pretty good and I'm very happy with the cut result and the control. So this one is definitely a keeper. So one thing that was annoying me about the foot pedal was that the, uh, one of the uh, cables uh, went in through the side and the other went in through the back. And then the one that went through the side sort of came out and went around. And no matter how I positioned it, it always wanted to spin on me. So I just uh, plugged up the uh, side hole and moved it to the back and it, uh, it's much better now. I can uh, leave it there in the front and it stays straight and I can keep the cords out of the way. So I think that way it makes a lot more sense. The other thing that I said I was going to do, that I actually got around to doing, 
was adding a rubber washer underneath the, uh, uh, rather between the table and where the table mounts to the tool. Uh, I definitely think that that has reduced a lot of vibration on the table. Obviously, I lost about a sixteenth of an inch uh, in height, uh, but I think it was uh, well worth it.